anyone has any questions for Dr. Wolf, I'm glad to pass the mic around here. Um, this idea of vaccine passports um, to say require, as the state of Maine did, to show a negative test to check into a hotel. But one could see that same sort of mechanism being applied to having a vaccine. Speaking towards the, the two-tiered aspect of this, how, how, have, you, have you encountered how uh, that sort of thing is, is, uh, would be dealt with in terms of natural immunity versus vaccine gained immunity? You know, we have uh, all of the, the research as far as shows they're about the same, if not uh, better for natural immunity, but you know, how do you see that playing out in terms of a two-tiered system? I mean, that's a great question. I guess my media training would say the fact that we're even at that place in the rhetorical uh, playing field is, is, is not a place I want to give any space to because there are always pandemics. You know, we had polio, we had uh, smallpox, we had tuberculosis, we have tuberculosis, you know, we had HIV. We never, early on in the HIV epidemic, horrible people said, let's get these people tested, let's make sure they can't, you know, interact with the general population without showing that they're HIV negative, um, let's quarantine them by force, and wiser heads prevailed, and many people died in the HIV epidemic, but we did not lose our freedoms and we did not create a two-tiered society based on biology. So we should, in my view, we shouldn't even be asking these questions. It's not the role, I can't believe I'm saying this, I'm a Democrat, it's not the role of the government to manage everyone's body, you know, in public space. It is the role of the government to give people the privacy that the Fourth Amendment accords them, that the Americans with Disability Act accords them. All my life, my team has been saying my body, my choice. You know, my medical decisions are between me and my doctor. It is not the job of the government to assess whether I'm physically fit to enter a building or not, because there will be more pandemics, there will be more crises, and the way this one is playing out financially, it will never end unless the people stand up and say, you know what, that is none of your business. You know, when there is an active state of emergency that is limited and overseen by the legislature that can be ended, you know, in reasonable time, subject to legal review, if there's ever a horrific crisis, we can have this discussion again. This is not a horrific crisis at this point. In the state of Massachusetts, in my county, eight people a month die with COVID. Very sad comorbidities. Average age, 85, which is older than the average lifespan. That is lower than the death rate from opioid overdoses and suicide. It is not an emergency in Columbia County, New York. It's not an emergency in Massachusetts. I don't think it's an emergency in the state of Maine. It's very sad that there are respiratory illnesses. There will always be respiratory illnesses. So my, my answer to that is it's, it's really nobody's business. And that once you start managing who is allowed into public space, history shows, and I say this as a Jew, you know, that always ends badly. Always, and if you identify certain people as you know more infectious or less valuable because of their biology, it's unconstitutional and it always ends in genocidal outcomes. That's my answer. <laughs> yes, sir. President Biden, just a couple of days ago, mentioned that we've got another health crisis in the United States, and that's and that's the gun violence. Right. Uh, it's, and I'm sure it's not his intention to take on the gun violence, we're going to take on the guns. Right. Once we're wearing masks and we're doing it, we're told, it's not, a, not really a big jump, is it, to then go into the Second Amendment? No, I think, you're, I think you're exactly right, and you're asking the right question. I mean, from a historical perspective, that's exactly what's next in the suppression of a population, is the disarming of that population. America, you know, again, I grew up child of hippies, you know, an urban Northwest and Northeast. Um, I grew up to hate and fear guns. You know, I married a veteran, so I have learned that guns can have a place in someone's home, safely used. Um, but, <laughs> but I guess where I'm going is it's really hard for me culturally to say this, but I have to be honest. 
The Second Amendment is the reason we are not yet as subjugated as other unarmed nations like Britain, which has been under house arrest, and Canada, where the lockdowns are being extended you know, month after month after month. When an unarmed population is subjugated to what is basically a coup, and I think we have to start using that word, they have no recourse. And that, you know, I've been doing interviews with Europe where Germans are saying, what can we do? And without guns, I mean, I'm not calling for <laughs> abortion. So we can do that now. <laughs> no, but you know, obviously everything should be resolved peacefully. However, the reason that our founders gave us the Second Amendment was because they understood tyranny. And they understood how helpless and vulnerable a population is when mercenaries have weapons and the citizens cannot defend themselves from a tyrannical um, oppressor. So I think it's predictable that guns would be next. I think it's really interesting that an op-ed was submitted to us by a big lockdown supporter about how great gun control and you know, COVID management are together. And I do see, right? I do see a completely helpless population with a combination of these endless emergency measures, endless mass mandates, forced vaccination, and you know, a disarmed population. So I think it's important to defend every amendment in the Constitution. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, I think everybody can hear me if I yell. We normally do. I'm Gary Drinkwater, District 121. <laughs> hey, Gary. My question is, uh, what? State of Maine recently passed LD798, which is a vaccination bill. Our kids, a lot of our kids, are facing expulsion from school come this coming September because of perhaps they missed the dose. Uh, you mentioned about HIPAA. Under HIPAA, you don't have a right to ask for my medical history. So do you see the log jam we're facing here? That we have parents are gonna, kids aren't gonna be educated. They could bring an action under HIPAA saying it's none of your business. But that's not gonna get them in the classroom. Right. Can you address that a little bit? Gosh, I need a question. <laughs> Thank you. That's a terrible, terrible situation. I am seeing this kind of snarl over and over across the country of kind of laws almost designed to lead legislators and citizens to throw up their hands. And I, I honestly I think it's intentional because when you break a country, you have to take hope away from the people and, and give them nowhere to go and no way out or terrible consequences. Like in Israel, parents are told, your child has to be vaccinated or you can't shop for food. Right? Um, so I think that there are psych psychological terrorism really being aimed at the people of this country and other countries in the world. I think that that is part of it. I mean, I've heard stories of parents who, you know, get a medical exemption for their kids to not wear masks in school and then the child is ostracized and kept by the teacher from joining his peer group or her peer group. A mom who escorted her unmasked child to school was shadowed by security officers, uh, one of our uh, community supporters. So I see this as being, I mean, as a former political consultant, I'm just gonna say this, these things don't just happen. This is a campaign. It's being rolled out. It's systematic, right? You can't just get similar laws, similar sound bites, similar policies, similar stasis, you know, across the country. And I'm just gonna say this as a Democrat, I hate it that I'm in this role, but I, you know, I have to tell the truth. Across the country, I'm hearing a wall, you know, that good Democrats who would otherwise work with Republicans at the state level to do decent things for their constituents are kind of being told, you can't, you know, and there's just this like, this wall, and I'm hearing it over and over and over in state after state after state, and I believe it. And I think it's the most serious thing. I don't. I won't go into like why, because it's speculative, like who's behind it. But billions of dollars are behind this, and the goal is to crush the the this country, to dissolve its institutions, 
to ruin its next generation. And I'm not even saying that's originating with the Democrats. I think, you know, people on both sides are kind of being used to advance this agenda. But this is not an agenda that arises from the people of the United States of America. Yes, please. Uh, Representative Jim Thorne, I just want to, I want to preface it by this one small paragraph. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of his country. But he that stands it now deserve love and thanks of man and woman. That was Thomas Paine, December 23rd, 1776. That is completely accurate today. And my question to you is a two-part question. One, what do you know about People's Alliance of Maine? And we're always on the defense, but where is the head of the snake that we go to stop this tide that's surging on us? Thank you so much for sharing those so important, timeless words. I don't know anything about the People's Alliance of Maine. I confess, I really don't. If you want to tell me and educate me, I'd be grateful. Should I pause for an education? <laughs> Well, they're educating the Democrats, I feel, on a daily basis, and they're the ones that are pulling their strings and, and uh, dictating the narrative. Because everything that I ever talk to or hear or see goes back to the People's Alliance of Maine that is controlling the Democrat Party and their narrative. That's really interesting. Uh, I, I don't know anything about them, and I'm not going to speak to them in my response, mm -hmm. but I am seeing in situation after situation money flowing, like vast amounts of money flowing to community groups, to churches and synagogues, to you know leaders at a local level, to influencers, um, to universities, to create a party line. Um, so it would take investigation by a reporter or a FOIA to find out why this is happening, but I'm, I'm validating that it is happening. And this is why, you know, this is why this is such a miserable, uncomfortable moment, because we're not really dealing with America anymore. We're dealing with unidentified forces intervening in normal governance and normal community action. I mean, I can't tell you, just to give you an example to keep it from like conspiracy theory land. I keep running into horrible crises, like you know, a synagogue that hasn't opened for a year and a half and won't open and won't let people gather to worship, and, or a university that uh, railroaded a professor in a propaganda class for asking students to think about propaganda around masks and the pandemic, and there's always a medical advisor in the back of it, right? So all these institutions have like medical advisors tasked by someone to do things that medical advisors really are not supposed to be doing, intervening in the policies of houses of worship or universities. Uh, so I think this is happening at multiple levels, um, but I don't want to speculate about this. I just think that we are not crazy as Americans to look around and start asking questions like, where is your funding from? You know, let's have more transparency. And so one of the things I'd ask you to, you know, in terms of what we do, laws that mandate transparency are very important right now. So pass laws that make people disclose where their money is from and disclose it publicly. Make, make I mean, one thing I do know is that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is flowing millions to news outlets for one narrative about COVID that supports emergency law and all the other things we're talking about. So I think a lot of mandate, your funding, if your news outlet is really a good law. You know, community groups, if they're getting big checks from someone, let there be transparency. The more transparency, the better in a democracy. So that's just a thought. Did you have a second question, or have I? Yeah, well, I guess my, my second question would be the action portion. Instead of talking about it, what is the action oh, that we can put into motion to actually take steps to, to stem the tide of what's happening? I mean, you guys, I mean, that's why I started out saying you're the most important people in America and your colleagues. It all begins and ends with you. 
I think I think you're in a really tough situation because as I understand it, your state house is not open. That's pretty sh shocking and terrible. And America should know. Change that word. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay with that. We think so too. Um, so I guess when you ask what can we do, I really feel like the first thing you can do is let yourselves know that it is the worst emergency of our lifetime, if not the last hundred years. Second, convene. I do believe that when smart people get together, um, they find solutions. Third, be much braver than you want to be. Um, it's so uncomfortable to be brave, you know, when the times demand it, and a lot of people are saying, well, I would stand up, I would speak out against this, but I'll be socially ostracized, or I'll lose my job, or I'll, you know, there'll be blowback reputationally. I am telling you as a student of history, you know, people in the gulag asked each other, why didn't we speak out when we still could? It only gets worse if you don't stand up now. And there may be losses, there may be blowback, there may be reputational problems, harassment, and so on, but it is now, <laughs> it is the last chance to stand up and be brave. The other thing I think you need to do is educate the people, the people of Maine. There's so much propaganda, and when people are locked down, they're isolated and subjected to propaganda, and this is true in many, many states. Um, but if you can legally gather people and just tell them what's in your heart and ask them to mobilize, again, I think, to pass these, these bills that we're suggesting, but creative people like you, I'm sure, have a ton of wonderful bills of your own, but ask the people to help you. You know, how often do we get to really be in a situation where legislators can say to the people, look, we need your help, you know, and we'll, we'll empower you in the following way, um, but this is, this is down to us now. But that is the best I've got. And, and the, on a happier note, history also shows that when masses of people uh, rise up peacefully together, there is no tyranny that can be sustained. And this is why, when you walk into a place, any place, push it. Let people give you crap. Let them see your face. Take off your mask, that's start number one. And then tell them what happened. But that's, I just had to get that two cents in. But I love listening to you, and thank you very much. And thank you for coming back. I just wanted to chime into this legislator in the, in Beth. the, the, the blue. Beth. Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi, Beth. Um, you know, I love what you said, and I, I, I'm really glad you brought it up, because in, in addition to what we do on paper, you know, social permission is so important. And a lot of people don't know that mask mandates often don't have the force of law, and they don't trump the Americans with Disabilities Act. So I've been having a lot of success going into places and saying, with a big smile, um, I have an ADA-protected reason not to wear a mask, which everyone does, because it's called your medical privacy, And but I'll stand at a distance from you if you like, and no one has given me a problem, uh, and it does create permission. Um, but I think the other thing that's important to share with people is, like, the CDC, it, they're just guidelines. They're not laws. Like, we're in this tyrannical reality where we're being talked to as if these people have enforcement powers, and they don't. Dr. Fauci is just a medical advisor. No one has to listen to him. So you guys do have a really important role to play in basically breaking the spell of mass hypnosis by informing people they don't have to comply with things in many situations. And if people aren't sure, where can they get guidance about the law? Is there like a hotline? Maybe you guys could do that as a public service. You know, if you're not sure, or Facebook Live, you know, webinars go on and answer citizens' questions. When do I have to do it? When do I not? I haven't been able to sleep for months because of this. It seems to me that Florida and Texas are taking things in their own hands. They're writing laws that will protect them from government overreach. Yes. And that's what we've got to do. Someone 
yeah. has to explain why the Democrats in the State House won't form common cause with you, even a few of them, to save liberty. And um, if they're not explaining and you're not getting anywhere, I do agree that being disruptive in a peaceful way is incredibly important. What I mean is, I didn't, I'm not a legislator, I'm not a lawyer, I have no special background to prepare me to deal with state laws. But I just hung out my shingle and said, we're gonna try to get state laws passed to restore freedoms. And the overwhelming support every day when I open my phone, there's like more pouring in, more pouring in. So I guess what I wanna say to you is, go into the streets, have a, an event in the park, tell people you want to pass laws to protect their freedoms, tell them, because you can't go through the news media, they are a block to you, they won't shine a light on you, you need to go to the people yourselves, even with handouts, like really we have to go old school, because digital technology will shadow ban you if you try to communicate, have a gathering in the park, have a picnic, teach people to do potlucks, you know, it, it, it have 10 talking points, have three bills. You know, if all you do is end emergency law, then that lets you convene like human beings to end emergency law. But you, you need to ask the people to show up for you to carry this forward. The details of it, you're all talented legislators. You know better than I what the bills will look like. We'll keep producing draft bills, um, and you can have them and use them. Uh, but there are already fantastic bills I've heard about um, here in the state of Maine. And I, I'm asking you to consider being less polite than you've ever been uh, and more inappropriate. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, is there a last... Uh, I'm a former German teacher. I've done a lot of uh, national socialist reading. Uh, read Vine Kampf in both languages. And um, well, what I'm noticing is I feel that people are denying that they're living in historic times. And how have you found success convincing people or showing people that they are, in fact, living in historic times? I, I don't have a ready answer for that. My audience is kind of, my supporters are kind of self-selected because I've been screaming about tyranny for 13 years and consistently through every administration because they both try to be tyrants. Um, I think, I mean, it kind of goes back to burning all your bridges. Uh, I, you know, I'm standing here with you today having lost relationships, I, you know, being a media darling of the left, you know, arguments with family, a very safe, comfortable life I used to have. And, and I, I did it because I knew I had to scream and yell that we're living in historic times. And a lot of people do not want to hear that. Uh, one reason they don't want to hear it is that it's comfortable to pretend that you're not. You know, there's a lot of denial. Wouldn't it be, it's so pretty here. You know, and that's the nature of a dying democracy. It looks pretty good till it's too late. And they're knocking on your door, you know, or taking your child away. Um, and I know that those of you who are hearing me with kind of the ears of your conscience and the ears of your soul, you might not know what to do sitting here this moment but it'll come to you when you can't sleep tonight or when you're walking around tomorrow or later in the week. Because these are, this is really a, a matter of personal calling. I would say we're in a spiritual crisis as well as a material crisis, and it's a, a matter of spiritual calling. And I think the universe will tell you what you need to do if you open the door and say, I am ready to be guided. Uh, and then I guess what I'm warning you is that y y you will have to be willing to be very uncomfortable to follow the truth of being called to defend your fellow citizens' liberty at this moment. On a happier note, <laughs> I, I know that many great heroic people get to the other side of that battle, um, having made the world better and, and being even more at peace with themselves because they know that they've done their part, that they're called on, but we're all called, I'm gonna say it and then I'll stop, like, in this moment, sitting in this room, we are all called on in an absolutely historic way, and none of us is insignificant. We are very, very important. Everyone sitting here is very important, and 
you know, you need to show up and it's gonna be very uneasy. And you, you might not get reelected, or you might, terrible things might happen. But you have to tell people, you know, this is an emergency. You have to tell the people of Maine. And you, you have to be willing to lead, as my husband keeps telling me when I say, I can't do this, it's too much, it's overwhelming. You know, you're called on to lead, and you have to tell them. And then say, you know what, you're sitting here, you might not have a plan, create a plan. It won't be perfect. Create one. You know, get together at someone's house, stay up all night, create a plan, and then take it to the people of Maine. It won't be perfect, but they want your leadership. The people need a leadership right now, and there I should end. Thank you so much.